Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Bulletproof for BJJ podcast. I'm JT, and I'm here with my killer, Joey. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about the truth behind the black belt. Now, we're all out there, we're, you know, we're pushing to get the black belt. It's this big, big goal for us to achieve, but then getting it, the, the hype before and then what follows is not commonly talked about. So we're going to we're going to go behind the curtain a little bit today. We're going to elaborate on these these various stages when you uh, when you actually do attain the strap. We're going to reveal all, guys. <laughs> Secrets revealed. Do not let your coach hear this episode. No one's telling you this. It is top secret. <clears throat> but um, um uh, just uh, on that, I don't. I think that for a lot of folks listening who are like early in the journey. Mm. They're like, nah, they've probably never thought about, a lot of them would never thought about getting a black belt. It's just too distant. You, but you, you can, I think you, we can all agree, you tend to have it like, oh yeah, like, yeah, like one day would be cool. But I know for me and a lot of people I've spoken to, it's like, oh, I just want to get to purple belt. Because that, because you can, you can see that. It's closer. It's somehow attainable. And then you get to purple and you're like, I'm sticking around for black. Yes. But I think it's within everyone's consciousness about the black belt in terms of it being like a standard and yeah. like, oh man, I really want to, you know, like, oh, you meet a black belt, you go, oh, they must have magic powers. Yeah. The holy, like you must be able and to. And we do. Some, yeah. It's, well, depending on what kind of a black belt. Look, I want to talk about the anticipation stage, which is when you're close. Like, and this is something that I guess it, it is possibly the most exciting because you're like you feel that you're close so whether you've had this with a you know a job promotion or um you've you've just bought your own house that's a that's a big milestone for some people um new car like well, you know it's that night before christmas kind of like you feel it like even if your coach hasn't said you're getting your black you 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 feel you're good you feel you're almost there and i think it's rare as an adult to get those kind of jittery excitement feels it kind of gets beaten out of you as you go through life that you don't that you genuinely feel so kind of joyful and you get that anticipation like oh i get that feeling when i walk into the tool section at bunnings <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah. Ooh, daddy's coming i need some new chisels today <laughs> <laughs> you would get you, you you and my dad should hang out more <laughs> <laughs> he'd probably be there in an apron <laughs> trying to explain to you what you need uh, even though he doesn't work there. I, I don't know, man. Like, I, I, I guess I hadn't felt that excitement for a little while. And I guess I, I was pretty fortunate. I, Lockie had come to me and said, are you thinking of going to Worlds as a brown belt? And I was like, no, I don't think I'm going to do that. He's like, okay. So, like, bearing that in mind where I was in the year, it was kind of around He's that. like, flagged. You've been flagged. Yeah, that's it. It was around May of that year, you know. And... And because I wasn't going to Worlds that year, I had it in my head that there was a grading mid year. I didn't, I didn't, you know, I didn't go up a grade, and there was a grading at the end of the year. Anyway, I decided, yeah, I gotta, I gotta at least get a comp under my belt or do a few things in the meantime to show my worthiness of, of the black belt. But um, yeah, man, it's crazy. It's a uh, knowing that it's possible. You've come so far, like nine years, ten years, however long it's taken you. And, and it's it's right there that's an exciting time when uh so was that the first time you came to know that it was on the table yeah sort of yeah which was how long before you got it uh, a bit over six months okay yeah and so and so prior to that had you thought much about like at brown belt had you thought much about getting your black belt um yes and no like i feel like at that stage i was like I guess I'll be ready. You know, like I, I was working. I was training pretty hard, even though I wasn't competing a lot. I only competed twice at Brown. But um, I was just trying to bang with all the best of everyone else, the other black belts, the other brown belts, and just try and be the best I could be at that stage. But I definitely didn't have the same comp focus. So it was just like, well, I'll be as good as I can. And as long as I can stand up to everyone else and I feel like I'm getting better, it'll come. I think I'd kind of... It's not like I'd given up on it, but I'd given up the seeking of it. I was like, yes, when I'm good enough, it'll, it'll arrive. Yeah. And, and then when that conversation kind of came in on the radar, I was like, maybe it's close. Yeah. <laughs> maybe this could happen, you know? So, yeah, I, I mean, look, you know, I got a black belt in Taekwondo when I was quite young. I was 14, so it was very different. But 
that defined my identity. Like, I'm a black bro. People need to know. I need that on badges. I need, like, you know, I need a shirt. Yeah. Everyone needs to know I'm a black bro. And then, you know, you get older and things are not as sensational. But I think the amount of work and the amount of energy that goes into staying in the jiu-jitsu game there is something that appears to be very sparkly and shiny about that black belt. How about you, Joe? It was um, when did it kind of come into your mind? Like, oh shit, um, it could happen. So belts were never spoken about at my original academy. Sure, and you know it was that faux pas, which it is obviously for you know it's a very typical thing in the jits game. It is. Adam was the first person to you know very openly open a communication with me about it, and he said to me. So I started training with him at Brown Belt, as you and many of the listeners would know. And he said, um, hey, man, when do, you, uh, when do you expect to get your black belt by? And I was like taken aback. That's a weird question. Whoa. I'm like, fuck, we're talking about this? Mm. I was like, shit, I don't know. I think I was 35 maybe mm. when I started training with him. I was like, fuck, uh, I guess before I'm 40. <laughs> like by 40. And he's yeah. like, oh, yeah, bro. No, like, sweet. And then as soon as I said that, I was like, fuck, I should have said like 37. <laughs> Sooner. <laughs> um, but, you know, so that was the first time I was mentioned. And then, you know, there was just, we didn't talk about it a lot, but, you know, it would come up every now and again. And so uh, I think probably the next time that stands out in my mind of the anticipation of it was when I'd come back from jujitsu after having my knee surgery. And I'd said to me, and I was a... I think I was a four stripe brown belt at the time. Maybe I was three stripe. And he's very, you know, as we've spoken about, he's very systematic with stripes. So yes. it was always a, a, a good gauge of how you're progressing. Um, and he said, hey, I want you to compete once before you get your black belt. I, w- I want you to compete at brown belt. And I was like, okay, cool. And so I did the comp and, uh, you know, whatever, some months later. And, um, and then, you know, and so from that point onwards, I was like, well, it must be coming soon. <laughs> you know, but I, I, you know, so then I did, I definitely didn't say anything. Right. Yeah. You know, cause I'm like, I don't want to curse it. Don't jinx he it. He told me he's been very honest and I'm, no. you know, he's never shown himself to not be Sincere of his way. word. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, that were big moments of anticipation, you know, and I, and I, um, the anticipation is different in for other belts because they were never spoken about. Of course. Coach never said, Hey, I think you're ready for this. This is what I'd like to see kind of thing. It was always just like, hey man, tonight's your night. Right. And so, you know, you might get a bit of anticipation, but it was often false because you'd be, do you know what I mean? Yes. Like, I, I, some belts are a surprise. Yeah. And I think if you're earlier in it, you don't necessarily know. But at some gyms, they do gradings where you have to go and demonstrate a certain amount of technique. You have to, you know, there's put re- your name on the list. There's requirements, yeah. right? So I think every gym is different in that way. But I think there is something around the black belt because it is, uh, it is definitely, it's an achievement for anybody. And even people who have doctorates and own businesses and have achieved many high level things in other facets of life, they will say, this means more. Like yeah. this, there's so much more to this than you can articulate. But I think the anticipation is... When you get to that point and you're like, Jesus, I'm, I'm going to be a black belt, it, it starts to hit a bit differently. And you're like, oh, wow, this is something I've always wanted. I'm going to get this thing. Like, and, and that can get you in a, a slightly different place because then there's, you got your, you, you're getting it. It's real. It is happening right now. And I knew, well, I didn't, I knew, even though it wasn't explicitly told, I was just told, be it the grading. I was going to go anyway, but it's funny because like Lockie, yeah, well, he didn't wink, but Lock on Giles is like, he's not good at kind of keeping a secret. He's, <laughs> he's such an honest guy. And he was just like, but you're going to be there, right? I'm like, yeah. What? Why is that so important for you to know? Yeah. Well, no, I just, but, but, but please be there. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, man. <laughs> I like, said the exact same. He you know, confirmed, was, reconfirmed about gotta, five times. You're going to be there, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> 30th, right? Yeah. <laughs> At this time. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's funny because it's a bit of a tell. But so many other people were grading the day I got my black belt. Um, but then we had to roll for our black belt. So it's like Thiago and Lockie are there and everybody's there. It's like in the CBD gym, like 
absolutely it all came together. And then there's like a couple hundred people in there. There's probably 200 plus people in there. So you can't all fit on the mat. It's just thronged with people. And it's like, all right, called out all the people. You're, these people are going for their blue. These people for their purple. These for their brown. And these people are going for their black belt. So they're going to be rolling forever. And man, it was, I was actually very lucky. My, uh, I got to say, I was lucky on my black belt day. There's two guys who I definitely would not want to roll to come get me, <laughs> you know, like, and because they were going for their brown belts, which was Simon Carson and uh, Big Sean. And uh, for those of you who know Sean, he's got like this devil's head tattoo on his chest. And it's got the curled horns and, Ooh. and he looks like- Sounds stone, like a soft dude. He sounds like, sto he looks like Stone Cold Steve Austin. Right. And well, we, we'd always been friends, but there's something around when uh, he was kind of late purple belt coming to Brown and I was coming up for black. We were very competitive and we'd had some pretty hard roles and whatever. I, I actually really liked the guy, but at that time we weren't on the best of terms. And I was like, oh my God. Big Sean comes to me, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm dead. But they were grading for their brown belts. So they were going to get rinsed as well. So we're all out there getting rinsed. And man, it was pretty brutal. I actually got pretty badly injured that day. Uh, and actually by two of my students, they just pulled the mean tactics on me. <laughs> like ripped a toe Who hold. taught them that? Oh, funny. Who taught them this kind of savagery? <laughs> True. Like maybe it's like the sins of the father. The sins of the father revisit the child, but it's flipped. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but man, it was, um, it was low key traumatic. Definitely. Yep. Cause you get so exhausted. Like for rolling me, for a couple of hours. Yeah. I think it was like two and a half or three hours. Wow. And That's then big. towards the end, Chiago was like, okay, drink break guys. And I was like, what? He's like, oh, we're having drinks break. Like every 45 minutes you get a drink. I was like, since when? We're in the last, we're in the last 45 minutes of this bad boy. I haven't been having any drinks. And he's like, oh, you can now. And I was like, oh, fuck, whatever. I was the only drink bottle was on the other side of the mat. I was exhausted. I'm like, I'm not going over there. Let's just, fuck, let's keep it going. And you're just surviving. Like for me, that was my experience of it. I know different people go through different things for their black belt, but it was a real relief. And then it was also awesome to be there with other people who were getting their black belts. So there's a camaraderie, I think. If you're at a big enough gym, you remember who you got your blue belt with, who you got, but you kind of always remember who you were standing up next to, like who also went through the suffering. There's a camaraderie in that. Yeah. So even though I don't love it, it would, it was a, there was a good value in that. And um, yeah, man, like I just, it was special. Tell me about the achievement, sort of less so than the actual event, but the, the feelings around that. The days following, yeah, I was. I mean, or the it was, moment, it was happy. In the moment, it was incredibly happy because it's something I put so much of my life into. So I cared, I cared a lot. Like I cared more about that thing than pretty much anything else. There's only there's very few objects I give a care about. It's like my journal, my diary, whatever, my memento mori coin, and yeah, probably my black belt. That's it. Like I don't I don't care for objects, but it, I could look at it and know what it represented for me and that was important and when i look around at other people with their black belts i just i don't know their journey but i'm just like yeah man it means a lot doesn't it and there's a there's a knowing in the 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 foundation the work the sweat the suffering the obstacles to have that thing it's it's pretty special how about you joe talk to me about getting the strap so the um yeah, the, the 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 grading itself was a lot less. You know, you were there, right? It was a, it was a smaller deal. It was a bit more organic. Um, I you know I was I was it was meant to be pretty, a surprise. Yeah, yeah, I was pretty certain I was getting it, especially once you know Mesa and my son oh, and Hattie the kind of kids showed up. It was like, ah, oh, it's happening. But yeah, I mean, and I've spoken about it on other episodes, but I'll but I'll quickly recap it. It was for me. It was I actually like my my energy went down. I was sitting there. I was sitting there as Ads is making the speech and he did a good job. He was talking about getting his black belt and how special it was to him. Right. And then his segue was going to be, and I hope this guy feels the same way about, you know, but so I'm sitting there and when it, and I'm like, oh, fuck, I think I'm getting my black belt. And I'm like, holy shit, I'm getting it. And I remember, I remember having this like elation and I'm sitting there with my, and I'm just trying to look cool. <laughs> right. <laughs> bitch, bitch. Yeah. You're like, like natural. You're like, you don't have to go out there in a second. Just be cool. And then I remember he's like, you know, Joe Black Bell and everyone does the thing. And, and, I, and I got up and I was like, so fatigued. I'm like, oh man, I'm so, like I felt like I just went down somehow. And it almost like, then I, you know, he put it on me. And then um, 
I said some words and I, I even think back and I'm like, what the fuck did I say? Right. I'm like, I don't think it was as profound as I had envisioned it would be. Yeah. I consider myself a good speaker, but I've always reflected on that and be like, I think I just said some stupid shit. And I'm like, man, it was almost out of body. It's heavy in the moment, right? It is. It really is. And so it was not at all what I expected it to be. Because right. like I've said, I thought it would have been really celebratory for me and that I would have been like super like frothy about it. Yeah. Um, so that was, that was interesting in the days following for me, it was actually like, like I was, I was like, there's no way I wasn't stoked about it. Sure. You know, I was at like the, 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 we're having drinks afterwards and stuff. Yeah. And we I had the kind of Christmas and, party. Yeah. And, and I was like, nice. you know, I think I, I don't know, was I like wearing it, but I was just yeah. like, yeah, this is fucking sick. Like I was having a really good time, but there was also like a weight to it. Mm. And I think that what it mostly what that was is that at that time, I didn't match up to what my expectations of a black belt were. Oh, okay. And I and I and I think that that's just to do with who I am, but also my journey with jiu-jitsu and that timing, right. which was coming back from the knee surgery. And there's just parts of my jiu-jitsu that I didn't rate, right. and that I still don't think are that great, right? So for me, it was almost like this: this you'd looked at black belts uh, as as a as a, a lower belt forever and thought. Man, when I get there, I'm going to know the whole game back to front. I'm going to be a master of jiu-jitsu. I have my game together. Yeah, everything. And I'll know all positions and I'll be able to, you know, and I was so far from that in my mind. Right. And of course, I now recognize that that, that is actually, like you never truly, I don't, some people do, but most people never really get to that. You never truly master it. Master That's it, the game, yeah. right? Yeah. You become really good at certain things, but the game evolves and there's this constant process. So in a way we're all kind of doing it together irrespective of which belt you're at. But yeah, I'd always thought like, wow, this is how I will see myself when I'm a black belt. And then when I got there, I'm like, I don't, I'm not that guy. Yeah. So that was, that was surprising and you know, whatever, great humbling. Right. Um, that is kind of how I would describe the, the sense of achievement for me at the time. Interesting. Cause I was going to say the next, the next step in this process of, getting the black belt was the thing that people don't tell you is the slump it's the post black belt slump which is oh no <laughs> i'm a black belt now Shit. <laughs> everybody is coming for you the expectation is you know what you're doing like the, the you're an adult now you're all grown up yeah. you're a black belt you better get your shit together because every belt below you they're gonna ask you questions but they're also gonna try and rip you and they're gonna you know like and other black belts are like oh you're a black belt cool let's test that you know it's it's very interesting i i actually found that probably for a month or two after i got it it wasn't imposter syndrome but i didn't feel like i was a really good black belt like i just man it's just like we're talking about um the idea of climbing a mountain and and then it's like you're like well you look at there's other mountains around and there's other people at the top of other mountains that are higher than the mountain you've climbed. And you're like, man, it's actually not a very big mountain. <laughs> it's, it's a foothill. And uh, that's Mount Everest over there. And there's someone on top of that. And, it, and, it, and it's crazy because it's difficult to not compare yourself to other people. Like they say comparison is a thief of joy. And you've got to really appreciate how far you've come. But then it's like, okay, well, now you've got to get out in the world. And it doesn't matter. You can't just be like, yeah, I'm good for who I am. Thanks. No, you're wearing a black belt now. You still got to go to training. You still got to keep learning. You got to keep developing. And the expectation, I believe, is elevated. Is that how you felt when you were like post black yeah, belt? Yeah, there is. There is. And I think like using that mountain analogy, when you're partway up the mountain, there's always more to go to the summit. And so whatever, whatever you feel you're lacking at this point, at blue, purple, brown, white, whatever you're like, Oh, well, I'll, cl I'll fix those things up as I reach the top. Mm. So by the time I get there, all that will be taken care of. You get there and you're like, wait, there's still gaps. There's still yeah. shortfalls, right? Yeah. So I think, yeah, I think that kind of hits you pretty hard. Um, yeah, imposter syndrome. Absolutely. You mm. know, I think uh, Ollie from, from Vantage texted me the day after. He's like, mate, so good. So you go, he's like, how's the imposter syndrome? <laughs> and I was like, mate, it's thick. <laughs> you know? It? Yeah. But, um, but yeah, so... I guess my slump kind of started almost immediately wow. in a way, Kicked in. you know, and, uh, and whatever, like I'm not, you know, I don't talk about that. Like it was a really negative thing. I think it's just, it's just one of, it's just a, it's just a feeling like a sentiment where you're like, 
holy shit, okay, you know, like... It's wow. unexpected, right? Yeah, yeah. And you're like, this isn't what I thought it was going to be, but okay, cool. Well, like, what can I make from this? Mm. So for me, that slump was kind of an impetus to be able to like look at things and go, well, yeah, where am I? What are my actual expectations of a black belt? You know, I remember, so this is funny. I remember when I was in the thick of this, probably the week after I got it. And I, I, I don't know how I came to this, but I think I was looking on Google uh, or maybe it was an article that got served to me, but I was like looking up like articles on black belts and there was some article from some fucking, you know, BJJ blog thing that was like, um, uh, what the different BJJ belts mean. And it was, I was like reading through it, white, yep, and then blue, yep, you're starting to find your game, yep, purple, yeah, now mastering that. Yeah, I'm like, oh, this is cool. And then I got to the black belt thing and it's like, you have mastered the art of jujitsu. You have mastered all techniques. You have no flaw. And I was like, oh God. <laughs> it was like, and then it kind of, I dawned on me that I'm like, oh, this is just some viral fucking blog that someone wrote for clicks, right? Yeah. But um, kind of speaks to that. You know, they were almost my standards. And I'm like, okay, I think I, I think I need to remove a bit of the pressure and just think about what is a really good What's practitioner. What's the reality? Yeah, what it? is that standard for me? Yep. You know? Definitely. And I think, the, the thing once you kind of you've overcome this initial reaction to it which is the weight of the responsibility of the black belt which is okay you have been acknowledged now what's next like what do you do with this thing you've you've got the house you bought the new car you got the job promotion you got the black belt the attainment has occurred what is next what do you do now like what are you going to do with this for me, it was no excuses. That was the thing. That's what came next. Because like, it's not as though at any point I felt sorry for myself. I was stoked to be a black belt, but I felt some weight on it. Because Lockie had given a black belt to Craig Jones. He'd given a black belt to... Sorry, who? Oh, some guy, random. Uh, he'd given a black belt to Ben Hodgkinson, who was like standout guy from our gen. Um, Livia Giles, and I was in there. Wow, so all four of you got on the same day? No, no, no. It was Craig. Craig, oh, Craig was, Craig was uh, the kind of Christmas before Okay, Hodge. And then, yeah. And, and so, I, I don't know. I felt... You're like, in this league now. Yeah, I had a weight of responsibility in that way. Yeah. So then I was like, man, I got to staunch up. Like, if people are like, oh, well, you're a black belt. Who gave you your black belt? You know what I mean? That people already form judgments on you for having it. Yeah. They're like, who... And some people don't give a crap about lineage, right? That's cool. I don't think lineage is that important. I guess the way I interpreted it was I want to be a good representative of my team and my friends because th there's a reputation around that. I don't want to be the weak member of the team. Yeah. You know, like I want to show, because I've learned so many good things here, I want to be a good representative. So I just went, you know what? This is the license to kill. I'm 007 now. Like <laughs> I'm a black belt now, so I'm not going to be... I'm not making any excuses. So that means when I roll, it doesn't mean I, I roll to win, but I'm not, I'm not going to roll poorly. I'm bringing much more conscientious effort to every roll. But if you've never rolled me and you're from another gym, I'm probably going to kill you. I'll smoke you. <laughs> Just so you know, you walk away going, fuck that guy who's that guy what's he trying to prove he's already a black belt, belt. jesus settle <laughs> down but it was just license to kill because i had noticed when i'd roll with other black belts they're just like uh, i'm a black belt i don't have to make any excuses like this is my level yeah. get on my level so what brought you to that as a realization or like to there's settle no, there's on no that sympathy idea. for you yeah <laughs> there's no sympathy you can't be like oh man purple world's going a bit hard on me <laughs> Fuck you're a black belt dude. Yeah. It's like you know, I heard something the other day which is like there's nothing worse than like an unhappy billionaire. Like, what do you have to be unhappy about? Like, no one wants to hear your complaints. Yeah. If you are in a room full of people who aspire to attain the thing you have attained, you want to I guess give them a good example. You know, and because it does become a bit bigger than you. I think that's what I realized. And and, and it's not that I suddenly just went into full like mean mode. I'm just like, no, I have a good standard. I'm going to show that. I'm not slacking here and don't let me catch you slipping. Yeah. Like it's, and so, th th and I think that helped me navigate it mentally because if other black belts rolled me, they were just, they were giving it to me a thousand percent. So yeah, okay, you got to show up. And I think it elevated my expectation for myself and I just embraced that shit. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, it's interesting. You? You, you said that to me when I got mine. You were like, this is your license now, bro. It's your yeah. license to kill. Yeah. No more apologies or whatever. And no. I was like, if you merc somebody, you're like, that's the black belt coming out. Bro. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's that's funny. But I was also like, it's not how I see it at that's all. It's not your view. You know, yeah. So give, give your take because I, I think yours is interesting. Well, for me, you know, and I joke about this, but I do, I do honestly feel it to a degree. I'm like, it's done. Like, I got my black belt. Like, I don't, I don't need to prove myself. That's one feeling that I have. The sure. other feeling is... I still haven't fulfilled my personal standards of becoming worthy of that black belt. Right. So I, you know, so I'm like, there's certain things that I, I, I want to reach with my jujitsu and with my development to be able to say, yeah, that's, that's where I see myself as a black belt, you know? So they're kind of like two competing thoughts in a way. Right. But I guess when I'm like, like say in training, as much as I'm still, competitive in the heat of the moment and all those things really i don't give a fuck if someone gets the better of me like it doesn't i i i think or something i'm actually trying to cultivate at black belt is giving less of a fuck right. like hey i want to work on something new and you might catch me a few times and that's okay yeah blue belt or purple belt you know because i'm working on this sure versus before it was always like no i have to fucking show that i'm this level this level constantly yeah and so yeah, the, and I still obviously grapple with that too, mm. no pun intended, because I am competitive and in the moment I want to show, you know, and I'm a fucking black belt. I'm not, you know, and Adam's watching or you're watching yeah. or <laughs> YouTube's watching, you know. Hey, Adam, Joey's slipping. Yeah, <laughs> As I, I will make you proud. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, you know, and I, and I think that I'm like, it's all like that, that mentality that almost got me to where I am I feel like is a bit of a self-limiting thing that I have now. Yeah. What what got you here won't get you there. Yeah. Right, 100%. So, um so that that's that's a thing. Um Yeah, really it's kind of about meeting those expectations for myself and I think, you know, at this end of the game you start to think how much longer am I going to do this for? Mm. And how am I going to engage with it, you know? Do I do I still want to be, you know, how long do I want to be doing hard rounds for? Is it something that I can still do? two times a week is it once a week is it you know do i do i have to change the way i engage with it and i think that's a thought that i never really had prior probably prior to my knee injury mm -hmm. um so i i suppose what i'm getting at there is it's something that i'm working out in my head now yeah well, i think there's this is where we kind of lead to our kind of fifth stage in this whole black belt um attainment journey just drinking some glucosamine. Oh, get it in. We've got to carb up. Have the energy for this. No, that's for joint health. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was just... You I know that shit that your dad yeah. was probably using? Glucosamine, glucosamine and yeah, chondroitin. Like, yeah, chondroitin, yeah. Glu uh, joint health. Joint health. Yeah. yeah, of course. Why not? you got to. Especially when you get to black belt. <laughs> um, it's perspective. It's a new vision. Because when you do, metaphorically, climb to the top of the mountain, you do have a new view. And... You think, oh, what can I see now? Like, what am I seeing now? You do look at things differently. Yeah. And that does allow you to operate differently. Because I think you can get blinded in, in the winning and the A game and just being effective. But that doesn't necessarily leave room for, as we've spoken before, about creativity and development. And you want to keep getting better. So then this does move you towards okay, what do I learn now? Like, you're kind of free. It's kind of cool. You've moved out of home. You're all grown up. What am I going to do now? Like, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in charge. I'm the captain of my own destiny. I'm going to cook spaghetti with barbecue sauce every night for dinner. Oh, life hack. Now, right, Jules? Carbs. <laughs> um, king chicken and rice. But I tell you, it's, it's an interesting thing because your coach is not really going to be looking at you too hard. You're grown up. So, but that's, that. I mean, sometimes, but... They've got to focus on people who probably need a bit more help. That's a good point. It does. It is great if you're a black belt and you've got people you can go to and chat to. But really, the thing I found, at least for me, my new vision or my new understanding was there is lots of gaps in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. The cool thing about Brazilian jiu-jitsu is it, it features many other disciplines. Like wrestling is its own discipline. Judo and just the stand-up is its own discipline. And... Leg entanglements. Leg entanglements. Own it's discipline. A, a, yeah. And you can go really deep on these things. And it's really up to you to work out where do I go next and how does that fit this this view of myself or how I consider my own jujitsu and 
It's funny you say that, that your coach, you know, sort of doesn't, doesn't look on you as much now. Mm. When I said to ads, when I sort of came back from the trip to ADCC and I was like, you know what, I think I'm just going to do no gi. Uh, I got to talk to ads about this. And I was like, ads, man, just, you know, I, I, mean, I thought I should let you know, like I've been thinking, you know, about maybe just sort of focusing on like no gi at the moment, not forever, but just, you know, yeah. he's like, yeah, man, do whatever you want. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh shit, thanks, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I was like, I was like, seeking, oh, okay, yeah, he doesn't give it. He's like, yeah, fucking cool, whatever. Seeking permission. I thought that he might be like, no, bro, you're like my black belt. You need to up I want Do you to be gay. training, you yeah. know? Um, but it is kind of funny, like, um, <laughs> yeah, that that whatever, it just things do shift a little bit. Yeah, and and I think giving someone uh ownership and responsibility of their own thing is is good. But that can leave some people uh, floundering a little, especially if they're used to having a lot of input from their coach. And obviously you, you learn plenty and you're pretty good. But I think my, my perspective on getting my black belt and having had it now almost five years um, is just basically uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shape this in a particular direction. And where do I feel really crap? I want to get better. I want to feel confident. I want to feel well-rounded. So that if someone were to come to me and say, hey, I want to understand some fundamentals of wrestling, I want to be able to speak to that. Same thing. I want to, if somebody wants to, I can explain the difference between why judo, uh, people who do judo grip in this way and how someone might grip in this way and, and just have a, a good understanding of why that is. Because I did spend a bit of time teaching as a black belt. I'm not teaching now, but I'm actually thinking about just raising my own little Khabib hybrid Rafael Mendez child and what I will ah. teach my son or daughter. Yeah, right. Like how can I how can I make them a murderous grappling weapon from age three or if they can't stand up, just drill guard. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's my because you already have a son. I'm so gonna I'm gonna go on the record and make a message to your future child right now. And I just want to <laughs> let you know that I feel for you. <laughs> My child. You can always come live with Uncle Joey. <laughs> you ever want to eat some ice cream, <laughs> watch some telly, <laughs> hang out a little bit, not just kick a soccer ball, whatever, play with Tonka trucks, Have come fun. over to Uncle Joey's house. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, that's, I mean, for you now, you've, you've come to your own conclusions. You've gone through this journey. You've had your black belt now on year two? Just over a year. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But who's counting? <laughs> yeah, who cares? It's all good. I'm counting. <laughs> ah, I got seniority in this one. Um, what do you think, man? You you've you come to this point in the journey, and you're saying you're caring, like you you're trying to be less attached to the outcome. Yeah. So I mean, the fact that I don't even these days put my black belt on because I'm training no gi. Oh, that's even a thing. You know, I'm like, damn, I don't even get to wear this motherfucker. Wow. Um, Except it, when he goes down the street to um, get, get coffee milk. and shit. Yeah. 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 Recognize motherfucker. Recognize King of Gladesville, son. Um, yeah. So I think I'm. You know, and we've spoken about this. This is the culture. This is, you know, many things. But really, I'm, I'm probably, I'm just moving less away from it meaning anything. Mm. I seem, I still, you know, hold myself to that standard. And I'm like, I am a black belt at jiu-jitsu. And I, and there, and like I said, within my own sort of mind, there are standards that I want to meet to be able to, to feel truly worthy of the rank. Um, but I also, I don't really think about it on a day-to-day -day level, I just show up at training, you know, and it's like, hey, what are we working on? And I'm I'm now more comfortable to go to someone who is a frothy blue or purple. I'm like, hey, man, can you show me that shit you're doing? Mm. Like, that's fucking cool. I can see you've been working on that. Teach it to me. Cool. Whereas I would probably have had a bit more of an ego about myself prior to getting a black belt. Right, interesting. You know, in a way, I, I just, I think I, I think for me, and the, again, this is personal journey, the process of attainment perhaps blinded me somewhat to true development right you know because you're trying to do whatever it takes to get there mm. versus well where is there is there the next stripe or the next belt or is there actually just becoming as good at jiu-jitsu as you possibly can and it's not to say that the two are mutually exclusive but maybe sometimes it chops and changes a little bit yes you know and so now i'm just like nah, fuck i'm you know my le like the leg stuff, I'm really quite amateurish at that. I want to learn that. And so I've actually, like I said, that that feeling of trying to cultivate less fucks about winning or losing, I'm trying to cultivate more of just a, like a student mindset. Development. Yeah, and, I, and I'm digging that. That's nice. That's, I think that's a, great, that's a great place to be. And for anyone, 
it doesn't matter what belt really, but it's I guess we put this gold standard on black belt and it's so so high, the almighty. But yeah, the the keeping that idea of learning and development and they talk about it so much in, in business and entrepreneurship that the best business people are always learning. They're always developing. They're always trying to know more in terms of broadening their scope of understanding. And I think that's it's a beautiful thing, Joe. Love it. Powerful place to end on. Yes, sir. Um, thanks, man. Hope that helps you guys out there. You know, like wherever you're at with the journey, these I would say that these feelings are kind of universal. Yeah. Even if you're like, oh, I'll, man, when I get my blue belt, you know, because that is your black belt when you're yeah, at life, in a way. Yeah, and amazing. then you get there and you're like, oh, fuck, everyone's just beating down on me and shit got real hard. <laughs> yeah. Right? So, you know, hopefully it helps you irrespective of your level. Um, hey, if you want some help with your strength and mobility, you got to check out our, the new app. It's free. You start training. You can follow all of our strength and mobility programs specifically tailored for jiu-jitsu players who don't want to spend a lot of time in the gym but want to perform at their best on the mats and off the mats. Um, go to Bulletproof for BJJ.com. You get it there, all the links and shit. And if you do want to leave a voicemail for the show, you can just click the podcast tab and leave us a voicemail there and we'll feature you on the show. Uh, and also, big love to the YouTube fam. We've got growing, growing base on YouTube. A lot of people watching the show there. We appreciate you guys. Um, thanks. We'll see you next week.